usually yeah okay just, yeah, just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on can we get that yeah we'll go we'll have that yes <laughs> is that the old crinkle cut fingers oh. that'll be good I was wondering if you're going to ask me that with fri- my fingers. What do you just take a photo of it? Oh, there's a frog. There's a frog in here. <laughs> oh, this is a disaster. Why did I agree to this? That's <laughs> no, good. The sun's out as well. Good to see you got your sunnies on. That's good. Yeah, true. What are you? <laughs> Witsy, how you going, mate? Well, thank you, Roy. Good to have you on with your commitments of co captaining the side, in season, studies, father of two. Soon to be husband, you've been hard to get on, mate. So um, I appreciate your time. <laughs> yeah, I've deflected a lot this year. So <laughs> no, nah, I appreciate you making time for me today. I know, and it, uh, you haven't really wanted to get on at times. I know I've been, I've been poking and prodding, but now that the season's over, a bit of spare time freed up. So you finally caved. Um, let's get into it, mate. Where, where's home? Um, home for us at the moment is in Miami. So um, initially, when I got traded. Uh, Renee and I came up here and, and we and we started in Miami and then we just moved two streets or three streets down the road um, and that's where we've kind of been for the last seven years. So, um, yeah, and we've watched the area grow and obviously Burley and things like that grow and we, and we love it. So, yeah. Take us back a bit earlier. Where Where's home when you where you grew up? Yeah, so I grew up in Sydney um, in a place called Normanhurst near, near Hornsby, so kind of like north, northwest um, of the Sydney, just the bottom of the F1 freeway and – that's kind of one home, just grew up there the, the whole time. Um, great family area, um, mates all in the neighbourhood and stuff. Like one of those like classic ride your bikes be after school, like straight out down in the bush, just get home before dark for dinner. Um, yeah, it was it was special and um, yeah. While we're there, mate, um, it's funny, you got, you got two brothers, Leighton and Hayden, and yeah. your wedding's – coming up soon and he yeah. texted me to we we're organizing a few things but i yeah. just told him that it's just the timing's impeccable that you're coming on and i just asked him if there was anything i should ask you and he said there's a story um oh you did <laughs> you said, said you never a, got back to him he said there's a story about nan and a golf cart um oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> that oh, you might want to touch on yeah when i was really young my um my grandparents moved up to port stevens and that's where they retired and they lived on a golf estate, um, so we used to spend every holidays there um, pretty much. Like the, those big Christmas holidays, we would have been up there for six weeks and stuff and by the end of it, you build up a bit of trust with the grandparents and they let you drive the golf cart. Um, anyway, I was driving one home from the uh, one, oh, what do you call it, country club or the clubhouse um, and, yeah, these sprinklers <laughs> came on on like – on the side, like they just popped up straight at me, and I've just veered the, <laughs> the golf. I would have been like eleven or twelve years, just full of confidence, fully flooring it straight into a tree, buckled the thing. <laughs> oh, granddad is a man of few words as well, and I, I don't think he looked at me for like two weeks. Um, he had to get his golf cart rewelded and put back together. <laughs> but um, oh, mate, that was it was an amazing, amazing to be able to go up there and just have a hit of golf, go to the beach. It was, yeah, very nice. And then growing up, mate, as well, talk us through uh, your sporting background. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or lack of. I can't, or... I can't look at you because you try to set me up with this rugby chat. <laughs> but, um, well, what did you do? Tell uh, us. I just I grew up with just in Sydney as – like winter summer sports playing playing rugby and in the in the summer t- in the sorry in the winter time and then cricket in the in the summertime um, and that was pretty much me from like under eights all the way through to like under fifteens under sixteen so um, yeah that was that was pretty much it played played at Runga Rugby Club um, um, we had it was pretty cool man we, we we won like three premierships in a row and then the representative team at um, for Gordon, I uh, was able to play in that. We won five state championships um, as a young fella. Like we was just a, it was just such a cool experience. Every team I played for was a really successful one. And then, yeah, and then obviously in the summertime played cricket, um, just for the local team, and then some representative stuff too. But yeah, the, the footy stuff didn't come till a bit later. Um, through the Sydney pathway, the you were playing union. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's massive through the private school stuff. Did you play yeah. through school as well? Yeah, I did. I did. It's just 
um, the school I went to, Barker, Barker College, it was I had an amazing school experience. But from when you first get there, like – you used to be compulsory to go to the first 15 games on Saturday afternoon. Um, so you've got like these – essentially you start playing for like the first if you're really good in year 10 and then um, you're 11 and 12 in your senior years. Um, you get to put on the red jersey and I don't know, man, we used to do these like snake um, – like run through the tunnel but we'd snake it all the way to the 50 and like – or all the way to the halfway line and just as a, as a kid in year seven, just seeing like the guy, the older guys get to do that, that was like my dream was to like play for the first 15, like run out in this red jersey in front of like some some days when we played Knox Grammar, our big rival school, it'd be like five or 6,000 people like surrounded around number one oval. It was, it was special and I just always had a dream to do that as a youngster. Um, yeah, just love rugby, was really passionate about it. So um yeah. What posse were you uh, playing when you were playing Union? I started off at fly half. So I started off in a in a great spot. I was like the half that. Like, so I'm, ass- so. I'm assuming that you haven't always like been six foot 20. Nah, then. I was always tall and then um, a, la- a late developer. So I was <clears throat> as tall as the next guy and then everyone was kind of going through it, developing and stuff and I still hadn't. And then when I finally did, when I was a bit older, like 15, I just shot past everyone. So I started at fly half um, and then <laughs> right, and then I just got slower and everyone else got faster and then I kept growing and then ended up in the in the second row and playing number eight. So. Does that mean you had the ears taped and the headband had, had on? John Eels. Well, you've got through. There's no cauliflower yeah, yeah. there. Yeah, I had the John Eels head tape. He was like my kind of idol growing up. Um, had like the Wallabies jersey in my on my wall um, signed by John Eels. It was like. Yeah. So were you getting picked up when they threw the ball yeah, in? Or yeah, you, I was the one you, that, that <laughs> got picked I would have loved to have seen that. You need to try and dig up some footage. Yeah, I know. I know. Be, yeah, anyway. When did uh, footy start then? So footy started for me when I was 15, I reckon under under 16s. Um, yeah, just obviously you play your school sport on Saturday and then I ended up um, becoming really close friends with a few blokes that played AFL and – they played on Sundays for St. Ives and I just, I don't know, I was just spending a lot of time at one of, especially one of my best mates' places, Angus, a lot. And then on Sundays I'd always go and watch him play footy or something or just because I was around his house and that. And then I was like, you know what, I'm just, I'll just have a run. And then it was like, oh, the AFL is just so well connected um, throughout obviously Australia. But I was just having a run and in, in my third or fourth game, I think they were there. Collingwood was there to see some of my friends play that were pretty handy and they had this scholarship program running at that time where um, there was opportunities for guys to become affiliated with clubs and, yeah, it was off the back of like probably my – I think it was like my fourth or fifth game um, that they were there watching and I don't know, they saw something in me at that stage and then it was literally probably within a week I was sitting down in in a a restaurant in Gordon um, with Derek Hine – going over this scholarship thing and what it's got to offer and, and, and things like that. So it all happened so quickly. Um, and I just think reflecting on it, like AFL just just suited suited me. I, I really enjoyed the game. Like, yeah, I played rugby, but I, I probably didn't – I loved AFL. Like I used to go out to watch the Swans play all the time with my granddad. Like um, he's been a member of the SCG for years and years and we used to go out there for every sporting event, but – we used to sit up in the old noble stand at, at the SCG. You'd always have to get there a bit early because there was these pylons and you didn't want to get stuck behind the pylon when you were trying to watch the footy. So, um, yeah, that's all been renovated now. But I always had a, a love for AFL as well. Appreciated the game, love Tony Lockett, Michael O'Loughlin, um, all those guys. So, yeah, I, I did have a, a love for AFL but just had never really got into it and then this was kind of – the start of it. So was that pathway at that stage, each club had a spot on their roster to draft someone from New South Wales and that talent, but now Sydney have that academy? Is that right? Yeah, Is that so how the, that goes the, through? Yeah, the academies are there now. Um, so that's kind of all, all diminished. But I don't think there was ever like a, a cap on how many you could have. I just think it was how many resources did you want to put into it as a footy club and Collingwood went pretty hard. Um some other guys obviously made it as well, but um, yeah, Collingwood Collingwood actually put in a lot of resources into it. 
they they paid for coaches, I think, and and then we ended up all they would have been maybe like ten to fifteen of us on this scholarship at Collingwood, and they got an affiliation with Sydney University. Um, so then in under 18s ended up playing at Sydney University, um, being coached by Tim Barling, who used to play for the Swans back in the days of Ruckman, and he was a really important part of of me growing as a player and very fortunate enough to be coached by him and he was putting in extra sessions with me as well like one-on-one sessions and stuff because I was so raw mate like I was no good really I was just I was tall and and I was I was like okay skill wise but I I had no idea really um there was just glimpses of things I I think that they saw in me and obviously I was pretty tall as well so that 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 helps that helps (laughs) but um (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they, they put in a lot of time and effort and resources into me and I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. So when did it become real? So you said they've come over under 16s, was it? <coughs> and within yeah, a week 16s, or so? Yeah, under 16s, yeah. So then when did it become, righto, there's you sitting down with Derek Hine, the list manager, still to this date, I think, at Collingwood? Yeah, I think he's still Yeah, yeah so yeah, you're curious. sitting down there with him. When does that become, all right, well done, shake hands, you're now a Collingwood magpie? Well, I can't, I can't completely remember the dinner, but I, I remember seeing an AFL contract put in front of me pretty quickly. Just, just It was just like a – that obviously give you a bit of a financial thing. Just so you, like I, I worked at Macca's, so yeah. I was doing a shift or two <laughs> a week what? at Macca's. At Macca's I, was on the, I was on the white and red meats out the back cooking there. So I had, a, I had like a 12-month stint at Macca's and then – um, the scholarship came along and I just – you could have seen me get cricket at the hand in the resignation. <laughs> but, um, You've kept that which is kind of Yeah, which is kind of what that was about. That was like a, a little bit of just so that time you could spend on your game and, and things like that. And in the end, um, yeah, I, I, I reckon we had that dinner and then I went home, had a chat with mum and dad about what it could look like. And, so, man, we just had no idea. Like I like it watched footy but just I oh, just so so green so raw like just didn't really know what I was what I was getting myself into and but it was such a good opportunity like they were, they were putting in so many resources and there was a real pathway there like I, I reckon that's the, the disappointing thing with where rugby's at it's like too many people are sliding through the gaps now because they just don't have the pathway and the resources that you can see to get to the top level and um it's hurt the game so yeah, AFL was obviously had that. You spoke about that uh, week that you went over and stayed with some of the guys. Talk me through that process where you thought you might have butchered it to oh, get on the list. Yeah, so this is – so that was obviously under 16s and then my under – it goes 16s to 18s and then I was still not average. <laughs> like <laughs> still average but I was, I was getting a bit better, um, just enjoying my footy and then – I got stress fractures in my back in my under eighteen year, in my draft year, and didn't play any sport. So, yeah, didn't even didn't even get on the park. I, th- I came back to play some basketball, and then got another stress fracture within two or three weeks. So I was out for like ages. Came back too early from my first ones in my back, and then got another one straight away. So missed my whole draft year, but they had that nineteenth year um, where you could. Play and be eligible. You could play and be yeah, yeah eligible. Sorry, and then yeah, so I did that. I got I was like I got to give this a crack now. Like I was back. I was getting so I got myself fit over that Christmas. I think it was going into that. They had this tournament at the end of January. It was like a uh, like a rep side, but it was to pick the New South Wales team. Um, and I and I got pretty fit over Christmas. I, I I put in a fair bit of work like to get myself to a level to to play in that in that tournament, and then. Had, a t- had an okay showing in that tournament, improved a fair bit, and then off the back of that, Collingwood got me down for this 10-day trial. They they allowed one scholarship player to kind of just live as a first-year player, um, develop, and then hopefully get drafted at the end of that year. So I got fit, had a pretty good tournament, and then got invited down for this 10-day um, tour. And I, so I'm down there, I'm living in a house with like all these first-year guys and and a guy, Christian Stagliano, who was looking after us in the house. Um, so we still um, maintain a good relationship now. And and I was out walking with him every every night, um, trying to get the skinnies down, like doing everything, <laughs> doing everything you can. Like So I'm living um, – John Segler was in there, um, just retired not too long ago. Um, Trent Stubbs, Kurt Eugle. I can't remember. I think that was it at that was time. Was Cedo there or was he living at home? No, nah, Cedo was living at home um, then. But so, yeah, doing the – 
trying to do everything I could to like put in a good showing and then it got to Saturday and the boys played and I don't, yeah, the boys played and then they're like all going out um, after the game and I was like, oh, I, got, I, did, I was in a bit rocking at a hard place here. <laughs> I was like connection with the boys. Or, Geez, is this going to do my chances? So we ended up we ended up going out and I was like, oh, having such a good time meeting all the boys. There was another house as well um, in Glen Iris. We were in Williamstown. So we'd all meet up and then go out together and then I was like, oh, ended up having a, <laughs> ended up having a pretty big night <laughs> and I was just thinking, oh, no, what have I done? What have I done? Like I've ruined it. Um, but anyway – Went back home, went back to Sydney, and then they're like, oh, we loved what we saw because um, we did some testing and some other things while I was down there as well. We loved what you saw. And then I, I literally think within a few weeks I'd moved down there and then I got that opportunity to live like a first-year player and um, I reckon at this stage I was an okay player and then having that exposure, there was in mix last year of coaching Collingwood Um Having that exposure for the whole season, it improved me as a footballer so much. So, yeah, the rest has kind of went from there. And then I was able to – and then Bucks took over in his first year and that was my first official year, but I kind of had that year of leading in as well. And then I'd just go away and play for New South Wales um, when the opportunity came. And then I think I played a few – yeah, I played a few VFL games at the back end of that season. Being the uh, measured man that you are and now – with hindsight being a beautiful thing, how do you reflect on your time at Collingwood? How you were there for five years, yeah, and obviously uh, you've had Mick for one, Bucks for four. Yeah, there was a ruck battle with Brody Grundy at the time, yeah. and they've they've lent into him. Um, yeah, how do you reflect on your time at the Pies? Like, is there anything you you regret, or was it a matter of you don't know what you don't know, especially being raw to the game? How, how do you reflect on your time there? Yeah, I, I love my time at, at Collingwood. I obviously it didn't work out for me in terms of like having a sustained career there, but I absolutely loved it. I learned I learned so much um, under under Mick at the start, and then um, obviously under Bucks as well. I I had such a enjoyable experience at, at Collingwood, um, learning off some really really impressive players. Like I got there, and that team had just won a premiership, so I was around some pretty handy players and got to see how they and the club and the team and operated and how highly functioning it was and so oh, extremely grateful for that. To get that in the first couple of years of your career is is is, is pretty amazing. Um, I would probably reflect on it and just think, yeah, I was – could I have done things better? Probably, but I learned along the way and, and grew from it and, and things like that. So I don't have any regrets at all, but, yeah, I was probably – probably didn't – harness it as well as I, I could have, but I learned so much from that experience. Yeah, well, um, what are some of the things that you would have changed now? And I know they made you better for for the run and the experience, but yeah. what are what are certain things that you would have tweaked or you just misread the play? Oh, I probably didn't have the greatest off-field habits. Yep. But I, I, I maintain like always – I tried to follow guys on the track who went after it. Like I'd always try to empty out every opportunity I had and things like that, but – Probably didn't take the greatest care of myself yep. um, off the field, and and then you look at guys like Pendles and, and things like that who I got to learn off, and then I, I came to probably appreciate more once I'd left the club um, and made like significant changes to the to my off field thing, um, the way I approached the game and, and things like that. So probably left a little bit on the table there, but I learned so much. Did you cross paths with the Rat Pack at all? Yeah, I did. Yeah, they were in full swing. Went off. Ooh, they'd just come off a of premiership, mate. They were going – they were enjoying themselves. But, like, they obviously get a lot of um, notoriety and they're, they're pretty fun blokes and enjoyed a good time, no doubt. But they trained, they trained very hard. Like, they got after it. I, I remember some sessions that we did when we were in Arizona and Utah and things like that and they were leading, leading the sessions. They were providing the energy and they got after it on the training track for sure. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You don't see too many – groups of characters like that anymore in our game yeah. and especially that that get note for let's say they're well they would pump up what they used to do off field and stuff and they used to get on the piss a bit and like yeah. like to have a party and stuff like that but 
as you mentioned, like they were still all great players. Like they weren't they weren't flickering in and out of the twos. They were all like staples of the side, winning flags, and they were just able to have fun whilst doing it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. They they had a balance, that's for sure. But um, I just remember there's these sessions that we used to. David Butterfin used to run um, at the back end of training when we were over in Arizona, where we were doing like shuttles up and down this indoor NFL field. Um, and he used to do this thing like once we'd done a few of them, it's like if you get in the top three or um, top two, you got to sit one out. And I, I remember a few guys um, not going great. And then when those when that call came around, they come from nowhere to win these, to win these, get in the top three and have a rest. And I just remember Chris Tarrant walking over to two of them or one, I can't remember who it was, walking over and just dragging him and putting him straight back on the line going, that's not how we train here and, so it's just like little things like that um, that you picked up along the way from those guys who, who were pretty the, impressive. You mentioned uh, Pendles. What's some of the stuff that um, now, having time to reflect, that he does that not too many other players do? I think it's just a consistency thing. It's just like an uncompromising professionalism, like he's got his routines and I, I guess he tinkers with it. I mean, I, I don't speak to him a lot every now and then. I, we flick a message, but I don't speak to him a heap, but – I just remember because he lived in Spotswood when we were in Williamstown in, in my younger years and we used to walk around the bay and things like that at night, like I said, to get the skinnies down and things like that. And it would be like the used to, wind used to come up in that bay and there'd be waves crashing into the, into the, into the beach there at Willie and he was, he was in there no matter what, like rain, hail or shine. Like some nights we'd walk down there and he was just walking up and down and the waves are coming in sideways. It was just uncom- uncompromising, things like that. He's obviously... Um, we trained a little bit together out at a gym in Spotswood, um, and it was just it was just uncompromising. It was just disciplined. It was just consistency. It was, yeah, it was impressive. Now take us to the move, mate. You come up to the Suns. Was that something that you outsourced with the way things were going at the Pies, or did the Suns come for you, or just a bit of mutual ground there? Yeah, I think like we touched on Brody um, before, but. Um, there was a stage there where I thought I was actually going to get traded to Carlton a few years earlier um, and I just walked in in my exit review and I said, I'm not going anywhere, I'm going to fight this out. Um, I reckon that was the year before I ended up getting traded the next <laughs> year. But um, Yeah, and then – and then so, yeah, so Brody came in like a year after I have got drafted and we just went at it. We just went at it for, for, for three or four years, um, every training session. Um, they just pinned us against each other and we just – it was – not sure what, what Brody's memory of it is, but it made me such a better player. Um, we were just pushing each other all the time, um, and yeah, it was it was a really important part of my development as a, as a footy player. And yeah, looking back on it now, it's probably made me the player I am now. Um, but yeah, so we were just fighting it out, going back and forth. Sometimes they'd play both of us. Um, one of us would get dropped. Someone else would have a stint. Um, and then it was in 2016 where I was, we went at it that preseason. We went at it really hard. And then I was able to get in there for round one, split my webbing. Split my webbing on Tifo, actually. We're playing against Tifo, board member now. But um, yeah, split my webbing. And then it got infected at that week during training and ended up having to go in for surgery. And I, I think I missed like eight or nine weeks of that season. And I was just, I was just devastated. I'd done all this work. I'd, and then, yeah, unfortunately, that that kind of yeah ruled me out for two months. And then, in that time, Brody got his shot. And by the end, of that back half of that year, he played really good footy. Like he was, he did really well. And I think the writing was on the wall at that stage that um, I needed to to look elsewhere. And I had a relationship with Rocket from Collingwood. He was the the GM there for a little bit. And then, obviously, he got the gig up here. And um, yeah, he helped get me up here. So that's kind of how it all worked. Mate, and then you come into a crazy 24 months at the club, right? Yeah. Steve May was still here. Lynchy was still here. I'm sure you befriended them, come close with them, and within 12 months, they've taken Ooh. off. Yeah. How was that first 24 months for you? And then also, Massive yeah. who's in that, after they leave, captain the next year as well? In your second year or third? Yeah, second, I think. Second. Yeah. So, mate, a, a heaps happened. Talk yeah. us through your first 12 months here, but then did you expect getting the captaincy after those boys took off as well? Yeah, it was it was crazy. I think you go from when I was at Collingwood where I was like this inexperienced young player 
and then within yeah 24 months you captain it was a lot a lot changed and mate the funny thing was like I came up here um and split my webbing again and then I was like oh no I'm in trouble here like oh I've, I've come here and get some all I want to do is just get some continuity just get get a go on the rock and and try and build from there and just get a game really just a consistent game and then I split my webbing again and I'm like oh no so I missed a couple of those this was in the first nab cup game and then Rocket's like, if you don't play the last NAB Cup game, I can't play in round one. And I'm like, oh, I'll get infected again. I'll be – so I was just all these. And then I was like, oh, no, I've got to play. This is my shot. Um, and luckily enough, it didn't get infected. How and then I was able to get that continuity. And I think once you get that and you get comfortable playing at the level, you're just like, okay, what can I add next? What can I add next to, to my career and to the club? And you want to be like – you want to be an integral part of what's going on, right? You want to try and build – like it's your career, like, and it's and it's our footy club. Like, you want to, you want the best for it. Um, and it became pretty clear once Lynchy and Maisie left that like there was only a few of us that were um, had had really any experience. Like, we went they, we went young. Like, a lot of guys who'd been here for a while got moved on. Um, they obviously left, and and then yeah, Dewey's come in. So yeah, pretty quickly I've gone from this young guy at Collingwood who was inexperienced to this. All right, you're a, you're a senior player now. You got to step up, um, and that was that was a challenge. But it was something I think I was I was ready for in a way. I mean, are you ever ready for like that jump? That big jump, like it's, you're still in uncharted. Like you're like, okay, am I going to go? There's still a bit of that, but I I was ready to offer more. Yeah, yeah. and I'm I'm sure with how. The time went at the pies and then coming in here and not knowing when to get the start, there would have been some self-doubt creep in at times and then being thrust this opportunity upon yourself as well while still trying to get your yeah. career going at that stage. How many games would you have played by the time announced skipper? 50 to 60? Yeah, I think it would be maybe up around 80, yeah. 80 maybe. Um, I think that's what just Rocket showing some faith in me at, in that year was really important. Like he, he was he's like, mate, you can't be train hard and get after it. I'll, I'll give you a – give you a go like obviously you had to play well you still got to beat I think Tom Nichols Dan Curry was still here like he's like you're still gonna have to beat him out and, and things like that but I think just having him show that faith in me and and, and let me just go go to work was was important for me at that time in my career and then was your first year as skipper a year that they announced a reset yeah the the footy reset yeah I, yeah I think I, 2019, I think, was when we started to yeah reset the footy club. Yeah. So what what's it like being a captain of a footy club as well when the club has announced that, like officially, that it's probably a couple of years off that we're going to go a bit younger. We've got our older staple players, which you being one of them, Took, Dave, at that stage, um, and then you're probably a few years off. Like, what does your mindset change? Are you like, oh, I've just got to lead from the front here? How how does it go? Yeah, well, I was there, I was always like optimistic. So I'm like, no, nah, we'll be we'll be right. We'll turn this thing around. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I think like on reflection, um, we were so young. We were so young. We we're trying a few players, seeing what they had. And um, I was always optimistic. I was like, no, nah, we play our best footy. Our best players play well. We'll, we'll win. We'll win. And and then we we went out and won like the first three games of of that season. So I was like, yeah, we're, we're all right. We're going to be all right. We're and on boys. I think we lost 18 straight. And that was, that was tough, man. That was tough because you're looking at, you're looking at ways to try and energize the group. You're looking at, um, no, nah, if we just do this, we'll, we'll be able to, and it just, nothing was really, really working. And then young guys as the season was getting older, it was getting going longer. It was getting tougher. Um, but yeah. Yeah, well, that there was a time that you talk about. There's a couple of weeks in a row where getting done by triple digits, mm. like coming in on those weeks, especially as the figurehead. Are they something that you like at that stage, late in the year, like you park, or is the first one like mouth guards in boys, and then it happens again? You're like, oh, what? Like, mm. where do we go from here? Yeah, I think you're trying everything to just get get the guys back to a stage where um, we're ready to go on game day. So there's definitely sessions where we had to bring the mouth guards in. Then the times like, yeah, we were young and we weren't up to it at different stages against different teams, but some things that are like you can bring in the in the game. So things are, we tried everything. We tried everything and um I learned so much about leadership in that period and 
yeah, just just essentially just try to just be a role model and someone for the guys to be able to follow. What I've really noticed in my time in football is the – the transition or the, let's say the evolution of 18 year olds coming in so like we're different when we were 18 you're you being two years older than me i think how we came into a footy club and how we were dealt by leaders to now how we've got to handle 18 year olds that come in because mm. it's it's just a different time right yeah. um how have you seen 18 year olds change over the time and with your leadership traits how you've got to manage and nurture guys that come into this environment that's tougher than any yeah yeah, for sure. There's just some. I just remember those guys who the pies. They were pretty hard on us at, at the stage. I was just kind of the way it was at the moment back then, I guess. Um, but I think you want guys to reach their full potential as quickly as you can, right? You want them to play as well as they can and, and run out with confidence each weekend, play to their strengths, and to do that, I think they need to be the best version of themselves and not authentic. And so, essentially, just trying to. There's obviously standards that you got to, um, you got to drive, and you got to get guys to to live by and and buy into. But you want everyone to be themselves, right? I, I feel like if you if you yourself, if you feel confident in that sort of space, you're getting after it, and you you you'll bring out the best of yourself on the footy field. So, mate, I was I was going through a list of scenarios that you've been skipper through, and ones reset or rebuild, whatever they want to call it. Yeah. Uh, the second one that I got to was Skipper over COVID. Talk me through what managing the group and being the figurehead of that was like at that stage also with your own stuff going on with a pregnant partner, Renee, yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, like I just, yeah. You just had heaps going on at that yeah. stage as well. How was that managing a group at that stage? Um, to be honest, man, that, that that was a whole of club. I think our club handled that really well. Um Dewey and, and Riggers, they handled that stuff really well. We just broke up into groups. And I think luckily enough for us at that stage, like on the Gold Coast, we were, we were like you hear some stories in Melbourne and, and different different states, that they were doing it pretty tough. We, we were okay up here. But I think having a young group um, that was, was impressionable, it was, we were able to get after it and and kind of just do all the things you do when you go away. You're trying to stay in your little – stay, um, have some groups together, try and work out together and – and I think we handled that that stage really well, guys. It's been a great transformation of the footy club under Alex. Um, his guidance is like we we train, we get after it. Um, so yeah, the the group was so so good in through that period. And then at home, yeah, it was a really special time because we had Archie. I reckon one or two weeks after they just called that break in the season. So we had like eight weeks where it was just us three, and it's really special and something I'll never forget that time. How has um, having kids changed your perspective on footy life, if it has? Yeah. Well, I'm sure I'm sure it has, but in what regard? Like, yeah, talk, talk through that. I think you realise how much time you wasted pre-kids. Um, you, think, you used to think you were busy. You, you, weren't, you weren't busy. You, you had a few things on, but I think, oh, mate, that's, it's, it's, we're so lucky. Like, um, so lucky Renee's an amazing mum um, to Archie and Gracie and, um, we've had that we had them pretty close together, about eighteen months apart. So they're becoming really tight now, which is which is which is cool to see. And um, oh, I just obviously you get the perspective of having kids. I mean, you're going through it now with Daisy, but um, yeah, it's it's special. And to be able to to be able to play footy, um, bring them along to the games and see Archie in the rooms and Grace in the rooms after the game, like it's some special times and. We're quite fortunate with footy. Like, yes, it's quite demanding, but you also get a lot of time at home with your kids. So, it is an it's an amazing time to be a dad. Yeah. And the one fiftieth, mate. Archie reckons it's one fiftieth every week. You were saying. <laughs> yeah, he's like, when do I get that opportunity again, Dad? <laughs> I'm like, when do I get that? When do I get to run out with you again? I'm like, mate, I'm doing it. I'm give trying me, my best. To get give me two and a half years, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah give me ten. I'll more get then. there. I'm trying to get there. <laughs> but he's like. He's quite a reserved kid, but um, loves footy. Like loves it. Like we play footy every night together. You know, just booting footies. We just we're pretty open with it. I just booting footies around the house and stuff. And he absolutely loves it. And a bit of a reserved, reserved kid and stuff. Like we warm up to you after a little while. But that day where he got to run out, he was like 
Just yeah, like it was. It was pretty cool. It was cool. And like, he, yeah. Oh, it makes me laugh when you tell him you're throwing the ball up and he's not catching it anymore. He's doing mate, the daddy. He's, he's tapping it. He's, he's doing he wants to be he's, a rock. He's doing hit outs. Yeah, he's doing. He's like he's that. We got to. Yeah, he's but he's he's his follow up's pretty good. <laughs> oh, he's gonna be good on the deck, you reckon? <laughs> well, he gets after it. No, it, it was so funny because I was like trying. We were just practicing because he loves it, man. Like, and obviously on. He can do what he wants, but he at the moment he just absolutely yeah. loves kicking the but footy he'd be around. Footy. And, yeah, he'd yeah, he can do what he wants. Yeah, not yeah. really. But shit, <laughs> nah, seriously. And then, um, yeah, so we're just catching, like learning to catch it, learning to catch it with his hands and stuff. And then all of a sudden, he just starts like batting them, just hitting them away. I'm like, "What are you doing?" And Renee's like, "No, nah, no, nah, he was watching you." Yesterday doing hit outs. You know, he's doing hit outs. Uh, Watching classic, in the backyard classic, just get a bit of practice. Classic like what, they, what, um, what young kids pick up on, hey, and um, it's just like a little sponge. Well, it looks like he's going to be seven foot, so he's going to get a free yeah. 10 years in the system, yeah. as, you, as you know. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, got, he's lanky, that's for sure. <laughs> Mate, I'm going through that list. Talk about things or moments that you've been captain through as well. So not at Adelaide Oval, Riley O'Brien comes across your knee and you're going to miss 12 months with an ACL. Yeah. Talk us through the challenges of, one, having to put a lot of time into yourself to get your knee back mm. to where it is and getting you just in the right frame of mind to be able to compete again, but also being a co-captain with Dave, worrying about yourself, then also trying to get the group in a spot whilst travelling through um, another COVID-affected season. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a strange, um, obviously unfortunate that it happened. It was, it was a footy accident. It wasn't anything malicious in it but yeah and then I think I because I think we went on two or three hubs that year in 2021 so I think I'd done my knee and I reckon I might have gone to the first hub as just as I was just wanted to get down there and support the team and stuff and and then and then the second hub I was trying to think of the timeline it was towards the back end of the season I think and Renee was starting to get pretty heavily pregnant with Gracie and um, and Archie was getting a bit bigger and, and running around and stuff. And then I'm just trying to think. And then it was, yeah, it was, it was a time in my rehab where I kind of just needed to like really just chase it, chase it. And all the facilities and stuff were here. So I, I didn't go in that second, that second half. So it was hard to connect. I was trying my best to get on Zooms and, and things like that. But I just had this mindset with the knee that was just, if you just empty out every session, that'll keep you safe like for when you come back to play and that was my mindset I'll just whatever they gave me I'll just have a crack at it and try and empty out it where I could and and that's essentially the hard work is what gave me the confidence coming back um and I definitely noticed that mate you you grow on like no other um there are alternate training ways that you found ways to train now and you're always looking to get better like who are people that you seek or do you mightn't even be close to them that you get motivation off and try to alter different ways and different ways to train as well. Being a big fella as well, I'm assuming you're mindful of how many Ks you want to get on the rig. Yeah, yeah, mindful of that. But I also think you need to keep going. Like you keep, you keep churning them out um, just to keep that that, that foundation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for your... Um, yeah, nah. <laughs> oh, I speak um, Ali Day, the, the Ironman. He just lives around the corner. So we, we chat a fair bit. He's obviously the ultimate professional. He's um, he's quite impressive with what he's done in his sport. It's... It, it's a shame he doesn't get more notoriety because he's he's probably him and Trev Henney are probably the two the two can one of the the ex time yeah they're probably like two former guests the, of the potty mind yeah. yeah true they they were yeah, on yeah. they're probably on the round my, you're in rare air my friend uh, the Rushmores of of the the pod at the, the minute yeah no but they're probably the Rushmores of the I mean it's just a shame where the where the series has gone now it's, it's not as big as it was when Trev was doing it but he's an impressive he's an impressive human man. he's Good family man, but trains like no one else have ever. You see his black ski out the back of like out near the shark nets every now and then as he's as he's going up and down the up and down the, the coast. So um, to chat to him a bit, um, not that I've ever like known it, but I bro, my, my biggest role was probably Richie McCaw, um, just for like his longevity, obviously in the game. But he was one of the best ever. But he was also like ducks of his school and. And, and super switched on. I think he's a pilot as well. So just like trying to get inspiration from from those like guys who have who have been really high achievers but done it over a period of time and, and just take little things um, from them. And you mentioned um, Richie McCaw being a role model of yours and you mentioned Ducks of your school. You knocked off some study this year. You got a degree in what? 
Bachelor of Business. Bachelor of Business. So yeah. how, how long did that take, mate? And why? It took me a long, it took me a long time. Um, it took about seven years, I think. I, I just it's always something that I've kind of been interested in in, in business, especially like business administration in, in sport and and things like that. And it's probably something that I'll look to try and move into um, once my playing career is done. But yeah, I just I enjoy the the side that side of it. Um, I think essentially, if you can, you're just kind of emulating a little bit of what I don't I don't fully know. I'm just spitballing here, for but it, like mate. go for it, spitballing. I don't know. You just become like part of a team after like working in business. You, you, it's kind of like the same principles. How you working together to to get results? Um, but you need to be collaborative and things like that. So it's, it's similar to what we're doing here. Obviously, just in a different format. Speaking about what we're doing here, what do you think we can do here? Like where you've been through a lot, mate, and now there's um, staff in place, young guys play more games. Like, yeah. I'm sure there's a difference. Well, there is a difference between hopeful and what you actually think can happen, but where do you truly see the club going? I'm extremely optimistic with, with where the club's at at the moment. We've got some pretty handy people around the around the place now. We've got some guys, some young guys, um, obviously some experienced guys as well that are really bought into the footy club. Like they are fully committed and we just got to break through and then I have no doubt that we'll have sustained success with the way it's been set up um, over the years. So keep it short and simple, mate. I'm pretty confident. And there's another question I had. So um, being at the Pies, right? So massive club one of the top four or whatever you want to call it, probably the biggest, and then coming to the Suns. Are there different, obviously, and it's well noted, we travel more, all those sorts of things, but yeah. as a player coming in, are there any glaring differences that you've seen that it's just it's just different? It's just the way it's going to be as opposed to what it is at, at a major club? It's, um, it's so long ago. Like I'd, it is different. Like I think the different things that you obviously – Notoriety is significant. I think there's obviously added pressures of playing down there that we don't have up here. That can be good and bad um, for depending on the player, I think. Um, but yeah, you're not getting abused after every game on on social media and things like that. Just but, by me. Yeah, yeah, just by <laughs> yeah, just by you, mate. Oh, mate, he got you done again. What are you doing? <laughs> nah, um, oh, it's been such a long time, right? I um, yeah, I. I I haven't got a heap for you on that. That's all good, mate. That's all I had for you. Is there anything you have for me, mate? Anything that you've been wanting to get back at me for or anything like that? Because I know you've been holding this off. No, there's a oh, I don't really add too much of a think about what I can hit you with, but um, no, mate, you're just, just going about your businesses. That's good, mate. I appreciate your time. Thanks no, so much. It took a while, but- No, thanks for having me on, mate. I- um. I like what you're doing here. This is obviously your passion and, and, and something you love. So hopefully you can you can see the pod grow because it's um definitely suits you. Good man. Thanks for your time.